tree grow? Why does the wind blow? When does a flower bloom? How can a rocket shoot to the stars or land up on the moon? It's science and technology, engineering, mathematics. Get smart, keep it simple. Let's learn about STEM. Hey friends, we are back and today we're going to learn about hummingbirds. The weather here is warming up, the flowers are blooming, it's looking prettier every day and soon the hummingbirds will show back up from where they've migrated to warmer weather. There are 366 species of hummingbirds, most of which live in Central and South America where it is warmer, but we do of course get some here in North America. The most common that I see where I am from is the ruby-throated hummingbird. Like most birds, the male of the ruby-throated hummingbird is a lot more brightly colored and a lot more vibrant than the female ruby-throated hummingbird. And the reason for that is that is to attract a mate. The male has to look pretty to impress a lady so they can lay eggs and create a family. The ruby-throated hummingbird, much like its name, has a red throat, green feathers on its back, and a white belly, but the female does not have this pretty red throat. Hummingbirds are very small, and the smallest hummingbird is called the bee hummingbird, and it's actually the smallest bird of all the birds, not just hummingbirds. It weighs about two grams, which is very tiny and is about five centimeters long. And I'll show you what that looks like. Two grams is about as heavy as this dime. So that is very, very light. And then five centimeters is this long from this finger to this finger. That is how long that teeny tiny bird is. The largest hummingbird is called do you have any guesses? The giant hummingbird. They used all their brain power to name that one. The giant hummingbird is 18 to 23 or so grams, or um, 18 to 24 grams, I think. And it's 23 centimeters long. So that is this long. So that's a much, much bigger bird. And even as much longer as it is than the bee hummingbird. So from this long to this long, it's still not a whole lot heavier. It is 10 times heavier, which sounds really big, but it only weighs as much as three quarters and a nickel. So it's still not very heavy. I mean, these birds are tiny and so light. Hummingbirds get their name from the sound that their wings make when they're flying. If you've ever seen a hummingbird or heard it fly, you will know that it does make a humming sound as its wings beat. Its wings beat so fast that you can hear them, much like a bumblebee. I'm sure you've heard a bumblebee flying around. Um, it's the same concept. Their wings are beating so fast, they're moving that air so fast that it's making a mm, humming sound. A hummingbird is not only really loud when it flies, it's also incredibly agile. It's the only bird that can hover in one spot it can fly directly upwards, directly downwards. It can fly side to side, front to back. And it can, like I said, stay right in one spot while beating its wings really fast. So it's basically like a tiny living helicopter. As hummingbirds get bigger, they cannot beat their wings as quickly, but they're still beating them very, very fast. The fastest that a hummingbird can beat its wings is 80 times a second. 80 times a second. So I'm gonna count a second in one Mississippi. One Mississippi. That hummingbird has just beat its wings 80 times. I don't even, if I counted to 80, it would take me almost a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, that's crazy fast. It's, try to count to 80 in one second. 
Did you count to 80? Okay, I'm going to snap, and then you count to 80, and then when I snap again, you're done. Let's see how many, how many you can count in one second. Did you get to 80? Did you get anywhere close? No. So it's hard to imagine how fast that hummingbird is beating its wings. And obviously it's going to make a lot of noise moving that fast. Hummingbirds like to eat small insects, but they also eat what is called nectar. Nectar is like a sweet, sugary, syrupy um, liquid that some flowers produce. So if you see a hummingbird going from flower to flower, it is drinking that nectar. Hummingbirds have a long beak that can act kind of like a straw. Their tongue comes out of the end and they can lick up nectar. Now that beak does open. A lot of people um, that I know have thought that it's just a long tube that doesn't actually open. That's not true. Their beak does open, but if you will fill a uh, um, hummingbird feeder and you watch it, you can sometimes see its little tongue sticking out of the end. It's pretty funny. So in addition to bugs, they eat nectar and we can actually make a simple syrup in our kitchen and feed it to hummingbirds, which I'm going to show you how to do that now because I love setting up hummingbird feeders because I love watching the birds fly around. They're so cool. I will say that hummingbirds are pretty territorial. So if you do set these up, a lot of times you'll see um, a male or a female kind of own it. And if another one comes up, they'll actually chase them off. So if you can afford to, or if you want to, if you have the space, you may want to set up three or four, set them up a good bit off of the ground. I've had friends that had cats that would um, unfortunately kill the hummingbirds because their feeders were too low and the cats could jump and reach them. So you want to make sure that you leave them high as well. And I'm also going to show you how to protect the feeder from getting covered up in ants. So I'm going to unscrew the base. And I rinsed it out so it's, a, it's dripping a little bit. That's okay. What you want to do is mix up sugar and water in one to four parts. What that means is you want to use four times as much water as you do sugar. I have two cups of water, so I'm going to do a half cup of sugar because if you take four half cups of sugar that makes two cups so that's one fourth the amount of sugar as water or four times the amount of water compared to your sugar if it's complicated you know write it down do your math on your calculator however you need to just measure out how much water you want to use and then divide that number by four and that will give you how much sugar you need. <clears throat> that was a terrible noise that my sugar container made. Okay. So half cup of sugar into two cups of water and I'm going to stir that up and it might take a second. My water was warm when I started this and it's cooled down a little bit so it's not going to dissolve as quickly. I'm going to grab a funnel because I'm not very good at pouring. So we filled our feeder and then we're going to take the base, screw that on, and then we'll quickly flip it over and we've got our syrup ready. I am going to run real quick and grab some Vaseline or some petroleum jelly and I'll show you how you can use that to keep ants from 
getting all inside here. They love the sugar water too, but they'll go in these holes and they'll clog it up and they'll murk up this water and they make it really nasty and then the hummingbirds won't like it. So I'll show you how to use that to keep the ants from getting inside. One second. So this is just petroleum jelly. I'm not entirely sure if it's sticky to the ants or they like sink down in it when they try to walk across it or, or what. I'm not exactly sure why it works, but if you will cover your hanger or your string, I've got this wire. If you'll coat that pretty well in the petroleum jelly, and then I like to glob it pretty well um, down low. It's worth it to me to do this extra step because it keeps this hummingbird food a lot cleaner and then your hummingbirds are a lot happier. So I glob that on really thick down there and then all over these wires and now I'm ready to hang it. And like I said, make sure you hang it somewhere pretty high because hummingbirds do have predators. I have even seen videos of squirrels eating hummingbirds. Ooh. So hang it up high somewhere that most things aren't gonna be able to reach or climb or jump. One more thing that's really important to know, sometimes people will tell you or you'll read that you should add red food coloring to help the hummingbird find the syrup or find the feeder. A lot of the feeders themselves will be red. I always buy red ones. So that helps attract the hummingbirds. They see this and they'll come looking to see if it's flowers or nectar or, or syrup. But you do not want to color your water with artificial food dyes. It's very bad for the hummingbirds. It can make them sick. They can die from that. So don't do that. I have never had trouble just keeping it sugar and water, keeping it very simple and then putting it in a hummingbird feeder that's colored or if like it has little extrusions here, like little flowers sticking off that are colored, they'll find it and they will really enjoy their snack. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you learned something about hummingbirds. I hope you had fun as we mixed up a simple syrup and we can feed the hummingbirds some homemade nectar. I hope you get a lot of hummingbirds to your feeder this season. And if you do, take some pictures and take some videos and comment below and let me know what you've seen. I would love to share the fun of watching hummingbirds with you. Here are some other videos you may enjoy and make sure to subscribe so you can join us next time as we get smart, keep it simple and learn about STEM. Bye.